What's Gucci everybody, it's AJ here again, and today I want to make a video about P-Threads. Now, P-Threads are known as C, or an abbreviation, and known in the C language as POSIX threads. P, I'll write it down here, P-O-S-I-X. And what P-Threads, or POSIX threads, allow you to do is control threads in C. Now, if you don't know what a thread is, I'll, have, I'll try to include a link to the description of a way to of a way of thinking about threads, but threads are a way of making your program of making your programs run faster and more efficiently. And so, kind of the theory behind a thread is, let's say that I have a pro when I initially create a program, it is one thread. It is one. It is one kind of branch of execution. That's what threads are: are branches of execution. And it is when I run my initial program, it is one linear branch of execution. And so what I'm what I do is, you know, when it, the reason I'm going to use threads is, let's say my my main thread is doing something that's very time consuming. And something that's very time consuming, if you're not that much in the computer science, is, for instance, reading from disk or going to I/O, which is printing something out to the screen. Or maybe the thread has to wait for something. Is to it has to wait for a request. Now instead of my whole program just standing there and you know waiting for this to happen, waiting for me to get the get memory or read from the disk or you know wait for this thing to arrive, I can use another thread. I can make a branch and make another thread, and this other thread will continue doing other things before me. Maybe it could make a calculation or try to do something else while it's waiting for this long task in the computer to be achieved. So that's the greatness of threads here. And um, a, li a C library allows you to achieve this. So one thing I wanna show you guys, I, wanna, I want you guys to ignore this mutex here in a second. I'm gonna make another video about that is I'm going to have two methods. I'm going to have thread1 and thread2. And as you can see, I already tested this out, and I've got printout at the bottom two here. I've got two functions that are thread1 and thread2 here. Um, they, I, and so what I'm going to show you guys is a basic you know, thread example. Note that I have I have included pthread.h here, and that I I have an array a pthread underscore t. Make sure you get that underscore t, and I called the array t as well, and it's size 2. And don't worry about the coin flip either. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to use the pthread create method. And so I'm going to reference um, two spots in the array. So I'm making two different threads for the two different spots in the array. And what I'm going to do is don't worry about the second parameter for now. And don't worry about, and but we're just going to worry about this um, second, this third, both of these third parameters. And so these third parameters are function pointers. If you didn't see my other video on function pointers, make sure you watch it or we'll make it understand. And so it's a function pointer. So it's telling this thread that this thread is going to be controlling the thread two function and that this thread is going to be controlling the thread one function. So it's going to be running the thread one function. So that's what the th they do. They create threads which, want, which run your indicated functions and you can store the, all the threads in an array. And then also, what I'm going to do here is that I am going to um, call pthread exit at the end. And it's very important that you always call pthread exit because you must have this in your main because you want to wait until you want to wait until all your supported threads are finished. All your threads are finished before you fully exit your program. And I'll explain why that's important in a second here. So what I did is I created two threads, and what these two threads are going to do is they are going to run our program. Now, here is the output I, I had from the last time I ran it. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run my program, and it's going to go through all the stuff. And I get you know the same output. It prints out what the coin flip value is, and I have not given it a value. It's a zero, but it's kind of, you know, like a garbage zero, but it gets initially sent to zero. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you guys something. If you noticed, um, right now it says thread two colon flipped coin, and it says thread one colon flipped coin, and I'm going to run it again, and I'm going to run it again, and hopefully I can show you guys something when it changes. I'm just running it a lot of times, seeing if anything will change. But nothing. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Dang it. It changed. But anyway, if you notice there, the order can flip. The order of the when the thread 1 and thread 2 get printed out can be different. I don't know how I'm getting so unlucky sometimes. It's because the other thread is executing. 
when I was doing this in practice, it didn't take so long, guys. I hope you're having a good day. Anyway, I hope you saw that. Okay, yeah, so there you go. I Instead of 2-1, I got thread 1 and 2 that time. And the reason because this is happening is because um, right now, our threads have no notion of order. What I'm doing here is I'm initializing my program, which automatically makes me my one thread, which is called my main thread. My main thread is just another thread. It doesn't differ in, it, it, it is not more important than threads I create later on in my program, like I do right here with these two threads. So really, I'm creating, I have three threads. I have the um, the thread I create by default for running my program, and then the two threads I create in lines 45 and 46. And so then I have something in my program, uh, my computer at the kernel level has something called a schedule, a scheduler. And it decides in my program what process, what thread to run. It also decides what process. A process is like a program that you're running at the current time. So the all, this whole main program is the process. But within a process, you have threads. And so my scheduler decides which threads to run. And for our implementation's sake, you can, we do not have control over the schedule, the scheduler. So it is possible, so we don't know which threads will be executed first. We don't know, you know, if something, uh, which, we don't know if thread two or thread one will be executed first. Now, a good program is well program, so that doesn't matter, but that is something important to understand that I, I right now do not know which threads will be run first. And so also I, and so that's, um, that's not really a, a bad thing about threads because they're really the great thing about threads is they're really lightweight and they allow you for to have performance boosts. So now what I did is I got rid of this P3 exit and I want to I'm just going to show you guys I'm going to click this run button again here up top and I ran my program and nothing is appearing in the terminal. It's all loading but I'm getting nothing in the terminal and that time I did get something. And so what's happening is it's possible that my main thread my main thread is executing it's creating these two threads and then since i got i commented out the exit um the scheduler isn't scheduling the other threads to execute so my main thread the initial thread is gonna create these two threads and hit return one before my schedule says hey let's get another let's um go to this other thread you made so my the schedule kind of decides arbitrarily when at which time to go to another thread or switch to another thread and it could be at any time it depends on the logic of your computer which we are not which i said before you know we are not worrying about so the p thread exit will automatically wait for all the threads that you have created to terminate before it goes on down to this return one and finishes your program so it will always ensure that th thread these threads you know are pro are little processes or i mean sorry our threads are executed or all of our threads are executed as you can see whenever i now whenever i load anything or press play and run my program something gets printed out so it's an, it's very important to have p thread exit and so this is a really easy way to do p thread create create i will post this code on github in the description below and i hope you guys had a great day